Capricorn. Hello Capricorn, this is your forecast for March 2017 and I am a little nasal. I had all the eight first videos done and then I came down with it. Super cold. So I'm a little delayed now in getting these out. So, you know, I hope you can still understand what I'm saying though. But listen, we have two clusters that we're going to be following for March, okay? So we have the first cluster in your third house, the second one in your fourth house. Uh, the outer planets, which are working in the background, they're moving very slowly and they're not doing too much from month to month unless the you know, faster moving planets create transits to them. So what we're going to be focusing on right now is where are these at right now? The third house holds your Sun, your Mercury, and Neptune. And um, so that has to do with communication. Also your siblings or short distance travels or just the daily to and fro, being busy. And uh, so I feel that this is going to be super important for you. It's like whom you communicate uh, to or with, what you're communicating, how you're presenting, whatever it is you might have as presentations this month. Um, I feel that it could be very creative because they're moving through the sign of Pisces, right? And Pisces is a very creative um, sign and it's uh, and Neptune is there as well and the both Sun and Mercury will pass Neptune which is really going to bring your inner vision and creativity uh, up to the forefront. The second cluster is your home life okay so your foundation, family life, your parents, uh, your real estate, you know, maybe some of you were thinking of buying or selling this month, which would be a great, great time for you. Why? Because the energy is behind it, pushing it forward, wanting to move it. And uh, we got Mars, Venus, we got uh, Uranus and the new moon uh, all in this area. So having the new moon in the fourth house, which only occurs once a year, and of course, that's always when we place our intentions, right? Uh, this will occur on March 27th. Um, this will be a time that you can initiate, start a new project, or also find a new home. And within a month, you should see the consequences of how that worked for you. What is beautiful is that both Venus and Mars here is bringing in all the beauty. It's bringing the action uh, orientation to the goals that you're wanting to complete at your home. And I could see a lot of you um, Capricorns now wanting to revamp what you do have. Maybe new colors on the wall, maybe new carpets, that kind of thing. Whatever it is, it's wanting to beautify. That's what Venus wants to do. Mars wants to get all your ducks in a row, right? Maybe move furniture, <laughs> put some physical energy. Maybe it's out in the garden area. And of course we are coming into spring and so we get that spring spirit wanting to uh, spiff things up out there but you'll have the physical drive to do this. For quite a few of you Capricorns you'll see that your parents might be needing you uh, more or needing your attention should I say more. That is for those of you still having your parents. Uh, the interaction here I feel is uh, lending a hand or lending an ear, uh, spending more time together, and do that by all means. The more time you can spend with your parents, the better it is, right? So these are the areas that are highlight. Uh, let's talk about that full moon. Center stage for you on this full moon, happening March 12th, will be in the area of your ninth house. Uh, which has to do with either planning a long distance journey, it could have to do with the law, lawsuits, so forth. It also rules the area of higher education. Um, so anything with schooling, maybe you need to get your applications out to get into college, um, or maybe you're looking for a visa. Uh, so all these things come under the rulership of the Ninth House, even publications and research and so forth. Um, so around the 12th, this is the area that's going to be specifically uh, aimed towards this, that you can achieve. Uh, you have Jupiter in your 10th house, which now, by the way, is retrograde 
uh, ever since February 6th, will be retrograding until uh, June 10th in your career house. So things might slow down, but for a good reason. It's allowing you to really look at whatever opportunities may now be coming your way, and especially, and in particularly, those that presented itself in the past that may come back around, which could hold a very good Ganga deal for you. Saturn in the 12th, it's working in the backdrop. Um, karmically, you're kind of concluding a 29-year cycle, so that's what he's doing there. And Pluto in your first house, we've talked about that a lot, is still a part of transforming this new being of you, but this is like, you know, a many year transit. Um, <clears throat> but I do feel that you early Capricorns have already felt the power of that new you, that power of transformation. And if so, you have, you know, please leave a comment down below to your fellow Capricornians, which is maybe smack in the middle of it, or still yet has that to come over the next two years, three years, they're going to be feeling it so they can know what did Pluto in the first house do for you, right? And of course, it all depends on where you have your personal planets and your natal chart to see what that Pluto is hitting up against, right? Or hitting down against. So it's different for, for all of you, but your common denominator is that you all have it in your solar first house. And that's what we're talking about here on a monthly basis. So Saturn will be going retrograde next month in April and will be from um, the 6th of April straight through August 26th and it is going to you know hook itself into that 12th house working on the subconscious level, your karmic level and so forth. So things may slow down, you might not feel that push to move ahead which could, in this case, be actually working out for you. It is your ruler, so when it goes to sleep, you, you might just feel that you could ease up a little bit. As we start out in March, Capricorn, we have Jupiter and Uranus there in opposition. This is taking place on the 3rd, but we're already feeling it before we even enter into March. Jupiter rules the law, the higher justice system. Uh, Uranus has everything to do with change. They're in opposition, so we could see that taking place on a global level. We have demonstration, we've got headlines, headline news here in the States, we've got it in Europe, we've got it in the East, right? Uh, people are expressing what they believe in. That's Jupiter. What is true to us, what is true to you, what is true to me. But Uranus is like the rebel that really wants revolution on wanting to be heard. And so we're seeing it in the media. And Uranus rules the media. So I'm feeling, and especially because Jupiter is going to be retrograding until that of June, these headline news are not going to go anywhere. They're going to stick around for some time yet to come. And I'm thinking the greatest things that we can do, you and I, um, on a personal level is to agree to disagree and tell ourselves that there's room for everybody, right? In that, we can be a little bit more generous. We need to be a little bit more lenient, not just look black and white because that is going to crash in this opposition. But if we can understand that there might be some creative outlets, new ways of thinking that can come from it, then we can harvest that in the long run. But the sun is starting out on the second with a vision. This is you seeing something very clearly, and I'd like to say hang on to it, because on the fourth, you will be communicating this or passing it on to somebody else, wanting their feedback. I feel that that could be something that has substance to it, because already on the fifth, uh, I see you putting action towards something that can give longevity into a goal that you're having. Mars and Saturn. So Mars being in your fourth house, I feel it has to do with a family member or what you're doing as a project on your home. Um, it, it's definitely going to bring value to it. And on the seventh, whatever it is you're communicating there on the seventh, that information is important. Um, it is still in your third house, and I feel it has a lot of sensitivity to the issue that you will be speaking.
speaking about. Um, on the eighth, you're taking it a, a, a level deeper, uh, transformatively so, where Pluto is involved. And so I'm thinking you're, you're going to cut into a nerve somewhere, which actually holds a lot of depth. And I feel that this can really spark things for you on the 8th and the 9th, bringing more new situations to the table. On the 10th, Mars is moving out of the 4th house, which has to do with your home, your real estate, and so forth. So get everything concluded best you can by then. Um, Mars won't be back in this area for another two years, right? So what you can do now, you won't have to do over the next couple of years, but now Mars is going to be focusing on the joy house, which I love to call it. It's the fifth house for self-expression. It's what you like to do when you have time off. Maybe go play golf or whatever it is. Um, games and uh, maybe just taking a little gamble too, which the fifth house represents. But also children, right? So it's like spending more time with them and maybe what they want to do. Uh, if you have any artistic streaks, you might see how that might flare up. You might become very active in expressing one of these areas. So you'll have that for the rest of this month of March. The 12th through the 17th might be a little bit of a challenge. Since your Saturn's in the 12th house, it's kind of like packed away in your subconsciousness, right? Uh, it's not like out there in the forefront. But both the Sun and Mercury will be squaring up on Saturn uh, these five days. And so it's more like if you're needing to find a direction or make a choice, you might be wavering a little bit. It's like, ah, uh, should I do this or should I do that? But, you know, allow these days to pass. Who says you're needing to catch a train, right? So whenever in doubt, I always say, just wait. You know, maybe not all the information that is needed is at hand. <clears throat> I'm so sorry for being nasal. Um, so there's no rush. Just don't push yourself. Um, on the 20th, though, the sun is going to move into Aries. So it's out of your third house, into your home environment, where Mars just left. The sun is coming in to kind of vitalize, or should I say revitalize, this is more you, yourself, your persona. Interaction with the family will be important for the rest of March into that of April as well. And uh, the 25th and 26th are days that you might just want to mark for uh, your romantic dates of this month of March. The Sun and Venus, when they get together, they love to romance, but they also love to shop. You know, you might go out and find good bargains, good deals, or whatnot. Now, let me tell you, though, if I didn't already mention, uh, Venus is going to retrograde here from March 4th straight through April 15th. So it might not be the best of time to go sign a contract or, or buy a home. You may definitely, you know, go out and, and look for homes. But since she's retrograde, you know, it might turn around before we get to April 15th. So we, you know, you don't want to place too big of monies or checks into your home at this time due to the retrograde of Venus. And definitely you do not want to go and take any facelifts or anything that has to do with beauty as Venus rules beauty, right? Um, you want to wait to after April 15th, actually May 1st onwards would be a much better time for it. Then we have, uh, this is a beautiful day when Mars and Neptune, they sextile. Mars being your goal, your drive, your passion, those things that you're, you really love and appreciate, right? It's also the men in your life as well. They're coming across more sensitive, dreamy, kind of open to spiritual, inner uh, aspects. So I feel that this could be very romantic. It could be very artistic. Um, it, it's like navigating maybe new or should I say higher levels of dimensions. Uh, between the two of you and uh, coming out of this month we have Mercury and Saturn which where they were squared and challenged they're now coming together so it's a better time to make a decision now than what it was there between what uh, the 12th and 17th if you wait to the end of the month or rather 29th boy you have it and you'll feel great you'll feel very
very, very secure there, Capricorn. Um, so if you're wondering where these two main clusters are acting out in your uh, rising sign chart or your moon sign, you can go listen to them now because that will focus on these two other areas of what you can expect coming in and where the main focus will be acting for you. So I'll see you there in April. Have a good one, Capricorn. Bye now.